Hello everyone. So in today's video, I'll show you uh, a basic difference between the product attributes and uh, attribute sets actually. So because uh, down the line I've seen very uh, like other uh, people get gets confused between what is an attribute and what is an attribute set. So uh, so in today's video I'll try to uh, give a proper explanation uh, regarding the difference between the uh, between the two uh, data and hope uh, like I'll be able to clear all the doubts um, between what is the difference between a product attribute and its attribute set. Okay. So without any further ado, uh, uh, let's get started. So as you can see, uh, currently I'm into my Magento's admin dashboard. Okay. So if you go to that link called the stores and if you click on it, I'll be getting this section which is called the attributes and in that attribute, we'll have two options. One is a product and one is an attribute set. So uh, what I will do, we'll basically concentrate on these two values called the product and the attribute set. So first of all, let me click on this link called the product. So when I click on this product menu, uh, the very first thing that we'll be seeing is that the list of attributes, okay, that is uh, like predefined in Magento. So the, um, I mean is that whenever you'll be installing any Magento, so this is what we'll be getting a few attributes like the category IDs, color, cost, cost, country of manufacture and all. So as you can see currently we have 46 records. So which means by default like when uh, like uh, currently I'm running Magento 2.1.9. So in Magento 2.1.9 this is what I'm getting by default like the list of attributes. So these attributes means uh, like the color and the cost like we are adding any like if you want to add any new uh, let's say if uh, like uh, like to add a new characteristic to my product so what I can do I can add a new attribute so that attribute can be of various uh, data type it can be a text or it can be a drop down or it can be a multi select okay so let's uh, let's uh, like uh, like uh, if you have a product and if you want to add some colors to it so what we can do we can add a new attribute called color and in that color we can what we can do we can define various options let's say they are like blue yellow and black whatever or let's say uh, if if your store is of garments so in that case what happens for your products so what we can do we can create a new attribute called the size so in that size we can have this XL L medium various uh, like various options for sizes so accordingly it can be managed for uh, like the products which like which will be useful for your customer so what we can do over here uh, like currently I'm in the product attribute section so what I can do like for adding a new attribute to my Magento so I simply have to click on this add new attribute button so when I'll be clicking on this add new attribute button so these are the options that I'll be getting in the page okay the very first page is asking me to give a default label okay so I think um, let's give an attribute called size. Okay. Now I've defined an attribute called size and the catalog input type of store owner or store owner. So it's asking me uh, what it is a data type. Will, will it be a text field or will it be a text area, date, uh, yes, no, whatever you feel like. So since it's of size, what I can do, I can create a drop down attribute. So drop down attribute means I'll be having this um, like I'll, I'll can uh, add number of options to the to that attribute. Okay. And now the very uh, like the next thing it will ask is the values required means are you making this uh, attribute mandatory when you'll be, when you'll be creating a new product. So do I need to assign any value to this product. So accordingly if you give this yes or no accordingly if you provide this as yes it means you are making this as a this attribute as a mandatory attribute which means whenever you'll be making a product, you have to assign some value, okay? So for the timing, I'm not making it like, uh, like I'm not making it mandatory. So after that, these are my, the next option that you'll see is that the manage option. So over here, what you can do, you can add options to it. So since it's of size uh, attribute, so what I can do, I can give uh, the sizes option, like the Excel, okay, I can give another one, the L, okay. I can give medium, I can give small, okay. So these are the
are the various options that I'll be assigning to this particular attribute called the size. And the very next section that I'll be getting is the advanced attribute. So over here, it's asking you to give the attribute code. So what happens over here is that whenever you will be creating any new attribute, so Magento, what it does, um, Magento tries to, like um, um, like in the back end, Magento stores this attribute. So in the database, all these attributes are being identified using their attribute code. So over here, what I can do, I can give an attribute code, let's say custom size. So this is my attribute code, okay, for this attribute called size. So now this attribute will be stored in my Magento's database along with its options with the attribute called, called the custom size. Now, the next thing that is asking is for the scope. As we all know, like in Magento, we have three scopes. One is the store view, one is the website, and one is global. So the difference is that for the global, uh, if, you, if you select it as global, so what happens? So like the scope of this attribute will be uh, same for every every website, every stores and its store view. Okay, and if you select it as website, so what it means is that you can configure this attribute based upon your website. So let's say if your Magento's admin it has got two websites, so each of those websites you can change the values, or you can save the products using uh, any number uh, like uh, whatever your your uh, option value is. Okay, so. Let's say if your product is assigned to website one, so accordingly you can save the product with its option value. Let's say for website one, I'll be saving a value called uh, large size, okay, and in website two, I'll be saving a product with medium size. So we can have, uh, you can do that if your scope is for website, and correspondingly for store views as well, you can do the same thing. So if you're having a single website with but with multiple store views, so for each store views, you can save your products accordingly. So uh, as you can see, we have this various number of options as well. You can use this attribute for filter options for your website. So you can use this as well, okay? So this is basically a pretty much like these options or the configuration that we need to do while maintaining a new attribute or while creating a new attribute, okay? Nothing more than that. We can manage the levels for here for this attribute, okay? And over here, we have this few storefront properties like whether this attribute can be used in search or whether this can be used in com compare options. Layered op layered, uh, we can use this in layered navigation as well like for filtering purpose in the website. So pretty much we don't have to dig into these things as because at, at, uh, for the time being. So as I said in the first menu, these are like whatever the values that are given over here. So these are the very few uh, values that you have to give while creating a new attribute for my product. So when we are done with this, so what we need to do, we have to simply click on this save attribute. So as you can see, the attribute has been saved. And at the same point of time, Magento is asking me like to clear the cache. So whenever we will be adding any new attribute or any new data into a Magento's admin, so we it is recommended that we have to do a quick refresh of our cache memory or at the same point of time if you don't want to refresh it you can flush the cache memory as well so that will also do the same thing so like currently I just refresh it like all the cache memory which was there so in the background still it's running over there so what I can do now since we have maintained a new attribute product attribute called the custom size so what I can do I can search for it just click on enter so as you can see it has been saved over here with the scope of store view so which means for each of the store views I can maintain this attribute option values accordingly for a particular product so now this is with the product attribute now the second topic is the attribute set so what do you mean by attribute set so let me just click on it and let's see what we have so as you can see by default Magento gives us one attribute set called the default. So attribute set means uh, we can call attribute set as a bucket or uh, we can say it's a collection of attributes. So what happens, um, attribute set will, uh, like it's a collection of all these attributes whichever is there, like whatever attributes is there in my Magento store. So all those attributes will belong to a particular attribute set. Okay, so by default Magento gives us a single attribute set called the default. 
and at the same point of time you can also add any new attribute as well using this button as you as you can see from here it's called the add new attribute set okay so what happens the difference between an attribute and attribute set is that as i said the attribute set is a collection of attributes so if whenever you will be creating a new attribute you have to assign that attribute to an attribute set because until and unless you assign that attribute to any attribute set so that attribute will not be able to uh, like uh, it won't be assigned to any product because whenever we'll be creating a new product in my magento that product belongs to an attribute set an attribute set is a collection of attributes so in order to like assign any new attribute to any product you have to add an attribute to the attribute set uh, it's a bit confusing i guess so let's 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 give you a short demo on that so i i, I believe that will be clear to everyone so what i can do so as you can see this is my default attribute set and at the same point of time i can add a new attribute so let's say i'm giving a name called custom attribute set okay so this is based upon the default means it will take it, it will take what whatever values was there in my default and try to grab all those default attributes which was there in my magento and into like into its own attribute set so as you can see my custom attribute set has been created and the page is still loading and since it was based upon the default attribute set and as i said by default magento gives us few attributes so as you can see these are the very few attributes which is there like which has been assigned to this new attribute set okay now what we can do over here as we as you can see like in few minutes back i just created a new attribute which was called the custom size so what i can do over here is that i can simply drag this custom size attribute and drop wherever i want it to be so let's say i need i'll be keeping this under the sq so see so what i just did i just dragged it and put it over here in the group section so which means i'm assigned like previously it was unassigned i seem in order to assign that attribute i have to simply drag it and drop it over here so this is pretty much simple assign to assign any attribute to any attribute set so whenever when we are done we simply save it so it's it's super duper easy like for creating a new attribute and assigning a new attribute to any attribute set so now what i need to do is that in order to see that attribute or in order to use that attribute so what i need to do i have to create a new product so previously there was one product which belong to an attribute set called default okay so now i will be i will be creating a new product which will belong to a separate attribute set that i have just created right now that is the custom attribute set so as you can see whenever we will be creating a new product in magento it will ask you which attribute set you want to use so by default it will give you the default attribute set but i want to use this custom attribute set that i have just created right now so whenever i'll be selecting this custom attribute set you see like this size field gets populated okay but if i choose this default attribute set we don't have that custom attribute okay now why the reason is that while creating that custom attribute we assigned that custom attribute to a set which was the custom attribute set and not the default attribute set so that's why if we select the default attribute set whichever attribute which was assigned to default that will only populate not more than that and since we have assigned that cust like that size attribute to my custom attribute set so whenever we will be selecting that attribute set all its attributes will be populating whenever we will be creating a new product okay so now let me just create a new product test2 
assign the size, give it a price, give it some quantity, assign it to a category, that's it. As you can see, like the product has been created and the same point of time, I have assigned the size attribute with this product. So I believe like in this video, I was able to clear the doubt or the difference between an attribute and attribute set. So uh, like if you have any queries, please drop your comments um, down below. If you have any query, I'll simply get into that and I'll reply it back. Okay. So I believe like uh, like uh, like uh, the, you have just liked the video and just stay tuned to my channel for the upcoming videos as well okay so thanks for your time see you next time bye bye